comedy in these four panels with four comedians. We're going to be doing it in sort of a conversational sure. fashion. We're going to be doing it in a, in a thing that sort of resembles the uh, picture of the Tonight Show, any sort of chat show, a podcast. If you're a millennial, uh, we're going to be doing it that way. Jokes will be happening. I promise that's going to be happening. Funny things are happening. Uh, please don't heckle us in the chat window and say, hey, when does the comedy show start? Um, because this is the format. So I want to set your guys' expectations to this is what comedy is. We're not going to be standing in front of a brick wall with our microphones pretending like you're live in the audience. Because as comedians, we understand that that is a real format that exists for a reason. And that format is having you guys in the room. It does not work without that. Uh, so we're zooming it. We're, zo we're zooming it right now. We're doing what we got to do. Uh, and uh, thank you guys for being here and part of the show. Uh, my name is Dan Fregalette. I'm your host. I've been on three canceled television shows. So tonight is going to be incredible. That's all I got to say. Uh, if you have a way to participate, uh, you can put in the chat window. You can say nice things about what's happening. Uh, you can go to the Q&A and ask us questions. We will try to answer those questions live on the show. Um, but other than that, thanks for being here. Hopefully I can get my uh, comedians to turn their cameras on and start to show up uh, as soon as possible. Happy 4th of July to everybody. Uh, we appreciate um, the holiday. It's one of our favorite things as Americans to, uh, we got all the weird traditions, right? We got the burgers, the hot dogs, the, the fireworks and the boats. Uh, so we're doing all those things. Um, Here's my panel. Here's most of my panel. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Um, hold on, I think I know what's happening with with our with our final person who's not making it in. I'm gonna do this, and hopefully they can turn the camera on now, uh, and that should do it. I'm gonna send this thing live to. Uh, fa there we go. Uh, okay, so welcome to the show. Uh, starting from the top right corner, as people are viewing, uh, Gary Curtis. Thank you for being here, man. What's up? What's going on, man? Thanks How for having me. Where are you, man? Where are you? Where are you quarantining? I am quarantined in L.A. City of Vegas. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. What's the what's the vibe out there? I you guys basically just got another kick in the teeth about being uh, locked up, right? Like you guys like were free and then now you're locked up again. Yeah, yeah. Shit was open for a week and then uh, the restaurant said, "Nah, we're good." So everybody's back in the house. <laughs> Turns out COVID is real. Uh, shout out to anybody who has not told their friends that it's a conspiracy. Uh, you're a hero if you're actually uh, respecting the 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 quarantine, uh, respecting the COVID. Uh, let's let's do that uh, real quick. Th I, this is just getting to me. I didn't. I was not aware uh, of of this scenario. You are a uh, what do you, what do they call it? Uh, um, a father to be? Is that an expression? I am. A I'm mother to be gets way more respect, I think. They do. I am expecting, though. Uh, <laughs> if, if anybody else out there uh, has gone through this, but I feel like my lady and I are so connected uh, that I've been having, like, sympathy pains. And last last week, I had my first contraction. <laughs> Shit was uh, <laughs> that's, that's great. The uh, yeah, I think I I've I I think I completely relate to where you're at because every time I hear a symptom of COVID, uh, then the next day I feel that for the entire day. So I, I feel where you're coming from. Uh, exactly a lot. the same thing. Um, yeah. So wait, so how far along? What when is this? When is the situation happening? Are you scared? Excited? What's? Nah, dude, I'm I'm excited. Like I feel like I'm I'm turning 32. So I felt like it was time for me to have a child, you know? Like, I feel like when you have a kid in your 20s, it seems, you know, it, it feels like a mistake. But when, if you have a kid in your 30s, it seems like a choice. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I mean, once you're 30, you, you know, you should either, like, have a kid or, like, get a communicable disease uh, in the bedroom. You know what I mean? Like, just... <laughs> yeah, grow up. Like, get HPV or have a baby. That's, you know, right. that's, that's really where you should be. It's... You know, otherwise, where are you really living your life? You know, right. um, very cool. Well, thank you for being here. Uh, looking at the, the the screen here, trying to figure out which which order. I could, oh, there it is. Okay, so Marcelo Hernandez, bottom right corner. Uh, Marcelo, how are you? You're quarantining in Miami still? Is that? Yeah, yeah. I think I live here now. Yeah, I think I think you're. That's and this is where you started, right? This is uh, yeah, yeah. Miami's back your here. origin story, and uh, we we just we sent you back. <laughs> yeah, dude, New York. This, it's what's great about comedy is like uh, all it took to get rid of a, uh, like a lot of comedians in New York was a mass pandemic. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> That's what I love about comedians. We're all sort of like one mistake away from living with our parents again. <laughs> it's that close for all of us. Well, very cool. So you're back where you grew up. Are you starting to like feel like your childhood self? Are you in, back in the old roles with your family? 
I, uh, I've gone the opposite way, Dan. <laughs> okay. I've gone the total opposite way. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a parent now. I'm a dad now. I'm a dad. I'm happy to say I'm a dad of, of my, my mom and my dad. And uh, <laughs> okay. it's, um, it's very, very fun. You know, uh, don't touch this. Don't touch that. There's a virus. You know, it's, it's um, yeah. Oh, you have to I explain have to ex COVID to them? I have to explain very simple things to them, Dan. You know, just very simple things. And uh, on top of it, I can you know, feel you being a parent because you're calling me my own name very too often. I just feel like <laughs> it's like how that's how parents talk to me. We're like, like, listen, Marcelo. OK, right, 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 right. They you're either know a parent emphasis. or you're trying to sell me something. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, man. So, um, yeah. And on top of it, everyone's in the house. Oh, man, everyone's in the house and um, they don't know how to use technology. You know what I mean? Sure. So that's I'm, I'm a dad again, like. Like I'm, I'm too good at technology. My fingers, I was born, I was born with it. I'm too good. You right. Well, you were born. You were not, not even that you were born with it. You were born into it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You were born. I mean, born somewhere in the nineties. If I, if, is that right? Yeah. My, my third phone, I could swipe on it. <laughs> it's crazy. It's insane. I'm on my third phone now. Right. <laughs> right. You just started swiping a couple of years ago. <laughs> Well, very cool. Well, thank you for being here. Um, yeah, going to finish me. in the circle here, John Elias. Uh, where are you? What's happening? Right now, I'm quarantined in New York. Very cool. Which, uh, what, what borough? What's your situation? I'm in Staten Island right now. Probably the oh, most very cool. Let me ask you a question. I, I dabble in the um, I dabble on the dating sites. Why, is there a law in Staten Island that if you're a girl under 40, you have to live with your parents? I mean, 100 percent, because they're okay. just waiting for their sugar daddy to buy them their new place, you know, I, you know <laughs> or their like parents to guy. die. <laughs> right. Yeah. Either way, they're getting something. <laughs> Either way, they're getting a house. Yeah. Uh, wait, so are you with your folks? Uh, actually, yes, I am. Yes. I, was about to, I was about to buy my own place right before COVID hit and then real estate just dropped. Yeah. So that's it, man. So, get that um, stimulus check and get a down payment, baby. Get in there. That's what I'm saying. Um, well, so obviously, uh, uh, the, the whole experience, the COVID put a stop to travel. What was your, uh, what, were you a heavy travel guy? Like, do you have the word like horrible travel experiences? Or are you pretty good at it? Nah, man. I mean, uh, most of the time I'm pretty good. You know, you would stand up, we go around, we, we do a bunch of shows and stuff. So I was, uh, it was actually this one time I was heading down to new Orleans to do a, sh a couple shows down there for this festival. And, uh, you know, when you get on the plane, you usually get this pilot, nice white dude comes on and he's like, ladies and gentlemen, this is your Captain Neil speaking. Today we'll be taking off for sunny Florida, the flight time of two and a half hours. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you hear that and you're like, this guy knows what he's doing, right? But when I was heading to New Orleans, this guy, our pilot shows up 45 minutes late to the flight, right? <laughs> and when he comes in, he just grabs the microphone and goes, oh, hey guys. Like, <laughs> That is the guy taking me 36,000 feet in the air. Just hit me with an, oh, hey, guys. <laughs> right? And then goes, sorry for the late departure, folks, but don't worry. I'm going to make up the time in the air because I know a shortcut. <laughs> what? <laughs> and that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, what? It, like, I'm starting to think of air traffic control patterns, right? Like, those are very <laughs> intricate things to avoid in air traffic. <laughs> right. And my pilot just told us that he doesn't give a shit, right? He just said he's going to make a hard ride in Virginia and just follow a gaggle of geese through a jug handle with all of us on board. <laughs> and being the only Arab on the plane, I was super nervous, right? And you know that's an issue when the only <laughs> Arab on the plane is nervous, right? So then this guy takes off, right? And he doesn't just go, Dan, you know? He fucking books it. Like normal flight speed, in case anyone's wondering, is 500 miles an hour, right? That wasn't fast enough for Captain Steve McQueen. He went eight hundred miles an hour that's what the dashboard said like do you guys know how fast that is that is literally the speed of sound so in the time it takes my voice to leave your computer and hit your ears this guy was just chilling and cruising the whole time you know? <laughs> and so he ended up cutting our flight time in half right a two hour and ten minute flight took an hour and five minutes and uh i'll never forget this because when my buddy picked me up he was like dude who cares i still got you on time like who cares Right. And I can't believe I had to explain to him that this wasn't a situation where it was like me and him got in an Uber and we caught all the lights and made it to our destination. On time. <laughs> no? Like this felt like our pilot, a fucking rocket heading straight to the ozone layer 
where midway we find out he's like a villain to a Scooby-Doo episode, you know? <laughs> there's so much, there's so much density to the story. There's so much wrong with this story. Oh, um, we just like peel off his mask. <laughs> it's, it was, it was insane. So then finally we land and uh, we start taxiing to the gate. And this is where, this is where the scary part happened. This is where the traveling like worst part happened. His microphone turned on. He had no idea. And I swear he was out of breath. Right? So all of a sudden we just hear, oh shit, we actually made it. Right? Like he was fucking surprised that we got there. I almost shit out my heart onto the floor. <laughs> it was the terrifying experience. I like, we always wonder like what happened to that guy, like from Top Gun, like the Maverick, the guy who was doing all like the, the, the like flybys and doing all the like behind the scenes, like shit you shouldn't do, but you technically can do with a plane. Well, apparently he went to pilot spirit airlines or whatever you just flew down there. Exactly. That's an incredible story. I like That's that. what you're paying for. It is. That's the one. That's a profession that we don't. That we like really care about, like the intricacies of doing it exactly by the book. That's that's the one. Like there's a lot yeah. of other professions that have like a lot of like like weathermen. If you got if you want to have a leeway in a job, it's weathermen. <laughs> you can be you can be different. You can literally just, but you can also just literally uh, just say the worst case scenario will happen, and as long as it doesn't happen, you're good. Like that's <laughs> it's the only job where being totally wrong about the negative. Like if you were a pilot and you were like, hey, we might crash today, and if you land, everybody's gonna be like, oh my god, thank you so. No, it doesn't work that way. It's the only one. You predict a blizzard, it doesn't happen, and you don't get fired. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know. That's why, that's why everybody runs for the water in the hurricanes is because the, they don't want to feel guilty. Yeah, what is the, what's the, I, I know, there's always sort of these asinine, uh, uh, like, things you're supposed to do when a, when a natural disaster hits. <laughs> yeah. uh, the other day, uh, we had somebody on who was in uh, Vancouver. They keep having earthquakes. And the big thing was you're supposed to hide underneath either a doorway or a desk. Oh. What are you supposed to do for a hurricane, Marcel? You're down in Miami. You, you get shutters, bro. You, you, you scream at your mom and you go outside and put them on your windows. You know what I mean? And then uh, you buy water. And then if you're rich, you get a generator. And then if you're not rich, you get candles. <laughs> we got candles. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember. Yeah, I do remember lighting candles. I lived in the I lived in the path of tornadoes. I do remember candles. But yeah, that was always the vibe. It was like get underneath a uh, like a a doorway or a desk, and that was that's like reminiscent of a time when desks were real pieces of furniture. Yeah. Like my desk right now is from IKEA. If I just put one of my hips on it, the whole thing splatters onto the floor. <laughs> like I don't think an IKEA desk is going to stop me from a hurricane or, a, or an earthquake explosion. Uh, well, this is a fun crew. I like, I like this crew. I, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for being a part of this. Hopefully we can entertain these folks. Again, if you guys have questions, comments, things, you can put it in the chat. If you got the email uh, describing the show and telling us what was going on, there's a way you can tip us. Uh, if you're having fun, please send us a tip. We're all quarantined. We can't do comedy the way comedy's supposed to be. Uh, if you got some extra uh, money and you can give it to us, send us a tip. If you're not having fun and you don't enjoy the show, you can also give us a tip because honestly, uh, that could push us to another profession. All right. So whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to do, send us some money. All right. Let's get into the show, man. I, I got some stuff I sent you guys to kind of semi prepare. I got some fun games that I like. Uh, one of the ones that I love is the is this this dad jokes thing. I don't know why, because I think I think day one of quarantine, I realized there's no comedy, there's no telling jokes anymore, and so I like to that void just started telling dad jokes, bad jokes, street jokes on my Instagram story, <laughs> and I just I forgot how much I love these things. So I got one for you guys today. Hopefully you guys got some for me. But uh, mine is uh, a woman's on trial for beating her husband to death with uh, his guitar collection. So she gets to the trial and the judge says, first time offender? And she goes, no, first time a Gibson, then offender. That's my dad joke. Dad jokes, dad jokes. <clears throat> I, got, I, got a, I got a little dad joke. Uh, is, that a, is that a guitar joke, by the way? It's a guitar joke, yeah. I thought, I thought you guys would get it. You know uh, your what, what is a guitar joke? <laughs> what is a guitar joke? No, that's my my Jeopardy answer. This kind of it kind of felt like Jeopardy for a second. Got it. <laughs> Gary, tell us your dad joke. Uh, how, how did Donald and Daffy Duck uh, promote their big car sale? How? With a spectacular. Spectacular. <laughs> I like it. I like that. that was, so we we just kept the show super PG there. This is dope. I like it. This is a potentially PG thirteen show. We'll see what happens, guys. Uh, John, do you have a um? Uh, dad joke for us. What does a ceiling fan say? What does a ceiling fan say? What? Woo! Go ceiling. 
<laughs> oh, that's my. Oh, yeah. I, I got a. Fan, I have a fan joke. I have a dad fan joke. It's a. Uh, um, uh, oh, uh, one, uh, two, two, uh, two windmills are uh, are in a field. One windmill says to the other, uh, "What kind of music do you like?" And the other one goes, "Well, I'm a huge metal fan." <laughs> Marcella, dad joke, bad joke. Um. I like uh, I like uh, glass coffins. You like glass they, coffins? Will they gain popularity? That remains to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pun in a dad joke. Here's here's like an original dad joke. Every time I go out to eat with my father, he'll eat everything on the plate because we're Italian and it's the clean plate club. And then when the server tries to take the plate away, he will do one version. It's either, uh, uh, no, I'm not done with that to the empty plate when they try to take it away, which makes every waiter uncomfortable. Or it'll be, um, they'll say, how did you like it? And he said, I couldn't eat another bite. And then he just stares at them for 40 or 45 seconds until they decide whether or not they can take the plate. So that's that's a tribute to my father. Yeah. All right. Let's do this one. Um, in honor of uh, the United States being the greatest country on the planet, uh, we are number one in coronavirus. We did it, guys. We're the greatest at everything. Uh, we're number one again in coronavirus. Uh, what else do you think that uh, we are number one in and that we should get more uh, publicity about? Uh, what, what are we number one in, guys? Not coronavirus. Simultaneously, diet programs and obesity. Yes. That's impressive. <laughs> We're good at it. That's what's great is uh, uh, I, I think diet programs are only about um, like, like it needs to be more about what you're going to eat when no one's around. That should be the new diet. Program. It's like these are the things you can't eat <laughs> if no one's looking. Because how many people have I met who are doing the thing and then they get home and there's just empty ice cream everywhere? Oh, for sure. Marcella, what are we number one in? That's a that's a good diet plan. Is only eat healthy when other people are watching. It's a good <laughs> diet plan. That's that's a. I mean, listen. You give me nineteen ninety nine. I'll email you everything you need, and uh, that'll be that. We're number one, I think. In um, I think we're number one in TikTok, Dan. I think we're 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 number one in TikTok. I, I think. Hope so. uh, I think <laughs> we're very entertaining for seven seconds. It's it's great. <laughs> It's it's exciting. We're blessed. John, what are, what are, what is the United States number one in? You know what? I was also going to agree with obesity because that just proves we're the champs at being well fed. You know what I mean? Compared to the rest of the world, we are the most fed country. In the world. <laughs> and and like a true American, most means better, right? <laughs> <laughs> we are the greatest. All right. Um, I like to do the I like to do a Mary Bank kill. This is a very July Fourth. Um, uh, centric Mary Bank kill and the Mary Bank kill for this one uh, maintaining PG-13 for the time being is uh, Betsy Ross, Paul Revere, Francis Scott Key. Quick, quick background. Uh, we did the whole thing last last show and nobody knew who some of the people were. So I'm just, Betsy Ross uh, is technically the uh, has, has been given the um, the authorship of the flag that we're currently using in this country. Uh, Paul Revere technically, theoretically, let us know, hey, the British are coming. Um, that's technically what he said. Maybe it wasn't, maybe he did. And then Francis Scott Key was the author of the, uh, Star Spangled Banner. So that's the Mary Bank Kill, Francis Scott Key, uh, Paul Revere and Betsy Ross. At will. I mean, Betsy Ross is the, is the easy marry. Uh, okay. I mean, she is the only female on the panel, but also <laughs> was divorced three times. Yeah. And I think the lady knows what she wants and she's not wasting any time. So you know what I like that about her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then who would you and then who would you bang and who would you kill? I mean, if bang means shoot them and I'd bang and kill. If I had to pick, I guess I think Francis Scott Key was a poet, right? He's a, yeah, he's a songwriter, yeah. Song, I mean, you gotta bang the songwriter. Sure. I mean, why would you why would you kill the guy who's gonna, you know, whisper sweet nothings to you? I agree. You know? Kill, kill the dickhead. <laughs> and then you killing who you killing i'm killing uh paul revere I paul mean, revere whatever he's a snitch yeah that's fair all right wait so then based on yours i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do i'm gonna do um 
Yeah, I'm going to bang Francis Scott Key. He's poetic. He's beautiful. He's going to say nice things to me. Francis Scott Key is like the like 1774's uh, Taylor Swift. So I just want to write a song about me. I'll just okay. we'll, we'll, we'll date for a little while, but it's not official. I'm going to marry Paul Revere um, because he, has, he's a, he ends up being an American hero. He ends up being a good dude. And like, say what you will about snitches getting stitches. This guy's got the information ahead of time. So I want to be informed and I want to make sure I'm there. Uh, Betsy Ross, I'm going to kill her because I, I, you know, I got to stay true to the game. Also, if you press me on it and I'm making up an answer, she owns slaves. So fuck that bitch. Uh, Mary Bank Hill, uh, Betsy Ross, Paul Revere, Francis Gaki, Marcelo. Um, this one's very simple for me. This was very simple. I am. I'm going to. I'm going to marry. Uh, I'm going to marry Francis Scott Key yes. because, um, you know, I wouldn't have sex with a man, right? So, and I know that marriage means no sex. So naturally, Smart. I choose marriage. Smart with the guy, and then I'm going to obviously bang Betsy Ross. She deserves. I think. I, I think. Um, I think I could. You know provide a service to Betsy Ross for what she's done for us. Right. You know, I could exchange something with I a wonder, bang. I wonder, I wonder if you banged Betsy Ross, if we would have a different flag. Like, I wonder what your <laughs> are. I was, I'm, I'm like, Betsy, like, just make it thinner or something. I don't know. Three I'm colors? Like, Come on, I'm don't laying, limit yourself. I'm, I'm laying in bed like, let me see it again. I don't know. <laughs> Um, bang Betsy Ross, and then I'm killing Paul Revere. I agree with, uh, I agree with Gary on this. He's a snitch. I mean, we would have found out the British were coming anyway. You know, they're not like they were coming in like a huge boat. Or they had something. drums, dude. They were hitting drums as they walked in. <laughs> yeah. they socks. You're not wrong. Like, I don't think they're the sneakiest, you know. You know and that's not, yeah, that's not what war was about. War, war, was, war was about showing up at a certain time and, uh, and just shooting each other like four feet away. That's what war was about. <laughs> yeah, so it didn't matter. He didn't, Whatever, he didn't, we didn't really need that guy ripping through the town. They're like, yeah, we get it. We get it, Paul. Uh, John. All right, uh, I'm going to uh, bang Betsy Ross because I feel like she could make some sleek negligee. You know, I think we could have a really fun time together. I'm not that a so. You're not wrong. Yeah, like only female on the list, like you said. Uh, I'm going to marry Francis Scott Key because I feel like that mixtape, you know, that's going to be absolute fire. That's going to make me marry him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Plus, you got to think of the residuals to the Star Spangled Banner, financial security. Oh, yeah. Right. You know what I'm talking about? And uh, I'm going to have to agree with the others. I'm going to kill Paul Revere. Mainly because I don't like when people are talking about other guys coming. You know what I mean? Like that's a weird thing for. Sure, sure. Yeah, this is a uh, this. Yeah, this is this is a, a, a like a, a an immigrant heavy panel. You know, like 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 globally. Like you know, not that not that any of us are directly immigrants, but we're all the product of some some kind of immigration. So we're like, you know what? Fuck that white dude. We don't really need. <laughs> Who is so that guy anyway? That. He's yeah. the yeah. He's basically he's the Karen. He's the let me see your manager. Of 1774. Um, Paul Elder in the chat. I actually haven't read it yet, so this might this might be completely against all of us. He says, America's great, but stupid costumes for dogs. There you go. He's not wrong. Uh, stupid costumes for dogs. Um, and then, uh, and then, oh, and then, and this is a heckle. This is a fair heckle. He says, uh, if Marcelo banged Betsy, we would have a boring flag. And that's, that could be a compliment too, right? She yeah. doesn't have any other creative outlets because she's got good mouth game. And then, uh, and then he says, Betsy would fall asleep. Um, which I don't know what that means. Also, but do you want do you want a fun flag, Paul? Is this what you look for in a flag? <laughs> you want it to be fun? I think it could be a compliment. Let's let's not let's not discount the guy. All right, yeah. let's get back let's get back into it. Um, Marcelo, uh, you're in Miami. It's a different culture. It's a different understanding. The, Miami's not even doing what Florida's doing. Is is COVID particularly scary in Miami? Yeah. Yes, yes, Dan. Uh, it is here <laughs> down in Miami. Um, as you can see, the numbers are rising tremendously, Dan, and uh, we're <laughs> we're absolutely concerned and taking all the precautions necessary. Uh, <laughs> no, man. Yeah, it's crazy. I think it's. I. I'll, I know. I can. You know. You can blame a lot of things. I blame it on the way it sounds in Spanish. It's just not. It doesn't sound scary. You know, coronavirus. That sounds like a terrifying thing that can. You know, destroy a person. Coronavirus. <laughs> it sounds like a fruit that I have at a smoothie place. I'm like, can I get a, cor a coronavirus with blueberry, please? I'm, I'm, I'm parched. Uh, that'll, be, that'll be 50 cents extra. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, and, and, and the other one is COVID, right? COVID, that's a pretty scary thing, right? Yeah. Don't you hate it when you hear COVID? 
and COVID-19, I, I just see like a, a news newscaster after newscaster, COVID-19, COVID-19. That's what just plays in my head. It's so negative. But in Spanish, Colby. <laughs> Colby? It sounds like it sounds like what Cubans say when they throw their hand sanitizer in the garbage. <laughs> Colby? <laughs> it sounds like somebody calling their dog. <laughs> Colby. Yeah, dude, it does. It does. <laughs> And then what's 19 in Spanish? 19, bro. It's fun. You want to go to Club 19? Let's go. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Gary. What up? Um, the, uh, so you got baby on the way. You're in Miami. You got, this, you got these decorations on your back here. Um, I'm in LA, yeah, with, with the African juju hats in the back. Is that what that is? Yeah, they're... Honestly, my, my, I didn't know what they were. My, my girlfriend ordered them. They're African juju hats. Now, how do you think I got these Indonesian masks? Yeah, I was wondering. I was like, oh, we're, we're on the same wave right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, so uh, so what, what are so now that comedy's closed, comedy's canceled, basically, right? What are you doing to, to stay essential and become uh, an individual that uh, creates an income for yourself and your new baby? Dude, I, I've been teaching lately. I mean, school school just ended, but I, I've been teaching online. Shit's been wild. What do you? What do you? What's your course load? What are you I, responsible I, for? I was I was teaching PE because you know what? <laughs> I'm teaching gym online. <laughs> okay, there's no I'm way not, this is real. There is nothing your PE teacher ever taught you that he couldn't say through a computer while you were in your. <laughs> <laughs> it's also yeah, it's weird. I, it's weird because. Also, I work with uh, just a bunch of privileged kids. And so I don't know if, if you guys like ever saw uh, like Freedom Fighters with uh, Hillary Swank. Hillary Swank. Yeah, yeah. And you know. Or like, as I call it, uh, Dangerous Minds too. Exactly. <laughs> and so this, for those of you who didn't see it, it's a dainty white lady and she goes down to, you know, like the inner city to teach all these like uh, young black and brown kids that they're more than the gang violence around them. Uh, but me, you know, I work with very privileged kids uh, and just help them fight depression. Right. It's the opposite. Right? It's the exact opposite movie. <laughs> Your movie's called Depression Fighters? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. My, my parents like... went to the Bahamas and left me alone, Mr. <laughs> Curtis. I can't handle it. <laughs> You're like, listen, Caleb, uh, just take your... <laughs> Take your phone down to the tech support that for some reason you have in your high school. And uh, yeah, we'll get just, cool. she's never at the right temperature during lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> you teach them over, over Zoom? Is it a Zoom thing? Yeah, I just yell at them that they have bad form over Zoom. So it's just like this. You're, you're literally just telling people to do uh, uh, like push-ups and jumping jacks? Yeah, that's it. I'm like, do squats. Not, you, your knees are too far. And their parents are walking by in the background. You're Sometimes not even anything until i see the parents walk by and they're like oh yeah i gotta say something all of a sudden you're like hang on is your back straight caleb is caleb is your back straight caleb caleb is your back straight yeah that's great i love that that's nuts uh john um so <laughs> i knew this was gonna i knew i was gonna devolve in some of these questions at some point in the format um so I wanted to ask you about um, your weirdest New York City. We all have one. Your weirdest New York City uh, homeless experience. Uh, so, you know, in New York, there's there's two types of homeless. There's there's like the homeless, and then then there's the people who just they're crazy and just choose to live in the streets at that point. You know, I, I would mean? argue. I would argue there's one more. Which one? And that's the fake homeless guy who drives a Mercedes. <laughs> panhandling but, but but has acne scars so he feels like he can he can uh he can panhandle for no reason he's an actor yeah. it's dude it's the ones that just do the craziest shit for their own entertainment like i was doing a show in manhattan and i, I go to a fast food restaurant to use a bathroom and uh, this guy follows me and homeless guy i go to pee in the urinal and he just starts peeing in a dixie cup i guess so like social norms aren't broken or something and uh he finishes first naturally and uh, goes to the sink and starts washing his hands. I finish and turn around and I notice the guy just starts washing his balls, right? Which that isn't an issue. You want to have clean nuts. Like I get it, man. I'm all for that. But then he wanted to dry them. And uh, the dryer wasn't one of those like up in the air dryers. It was one of those Dysons where you dunk your hands in. No. So this guy dunks his ball bag into it and just, you know what I mean? 
pulls it out, and then grabs the cup of piss, like full of piss, and leaves. So he just kept his cup. And I'm thinking, where's he going with this, right? We end up being on the same subway platform. It's about 6 p.m. So in New York, 6 p.m. is rush hour, right? We got express trains running. And this was like the scene to the end of the movie Rookie of the Year, right? <laughs> this, this guy just takes his cup of urine and chucks it at a train. And everyone to the right of him gets soaked in his piss, right? I don't remember that being in the movie Rookie of the Year. Uh, it was close. I think it was a baseball, but in this <laughs> movie, <it was>. <laughs> <laughs> So you have to explain the movie Rookie of the Year. <laughs> like, it's just like Rookie of the Year. He shit on four people. It's like angels in the outfield. Right? <laughs> so, but then the crazy part of it was he walked up to the people who were just so annoyed at what just happened, and he deadpan stares at the group and just very quietly goes, got him, and then walks got away from him. George Jefferson walk for the entire train platform. Nobody knows what to do at this point. It was, it was literally the crazy, yeah, exactly. <laughs> a billion dollar strut all the way down the platform. He didn't stop for a hundred plus feet. How, okay, so this question is for everybody. How long after you get hit with piss do you know what just happened to you? I mean, first you gotta take the initial impact into consideration, right? And then right. you have to smell it. Right. And is it very yellow or very clear? Because that makes a difference. I'm going to say at least 30 seconds. Yeah. Well, because there's also like there's a period of denial where you're like, there's no way that I just got <laughs> homeless man AIDS piss on me. I'm, I'm, I'm negative. So I'm five seconds. I'm like, of course, this is a, of course, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> every, every drop that hits you in New York City, you just assume is piss. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, yep. OK, classic New York. That's the thing. <laughs> That's the thing, John, is you see, in New York, you see a crazy person, you immediately think, I don't want this person in my life. And 30 seconds later, every time they're in your life, they're, in, they're, they're, they're your life. two feet away. <laughs> the, <laughs> guy gets in, the guy gets in three carts down and then you're like not even at your stop and he walks into your thing somehow. And you're like, oh my God, this guy. You Just avoid really eye contact. contact. That's what it is. You avoid eye contact at all costs. It's always a hands over head like you have a headache issue. You know what I mean? Like, just yeah. avoid. To be fair, they John, know. you look like somebody who always has a headache. Fair enough. I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's the struggle, man. Just like, ah. Uh... Why I'm losing my hair, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I think, I, think there's, I think there's equal crazy people in New York City and, like, Alabama. The difference literally is having a car. Like, you can be crazy in your car and nobody ever knows. You remove a car. Dude, I was walking home one day replaying a fight that I had with a girl I was dating, and I was, I didn't really, I was full on talking to myself, and I cut the corner, and there was two people, and I'd been talking to myself for God knows how long because I didn't have a car to have that private moment. Everything's in, in, out in the open. A homeless guy is just a guy who got a, a bad breakup in the last 10 years. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's also a, a, that's, that's the biggest shelter in New York. What is the subway? Yeah. Yeah. Like you're not, you're not homeless in New York. You just either live in an apartment or you live on the subway. <laughs> Same square footage, really, if you ask me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, would I would love to repurpose. They, they have a lot of those now that you can repurpose a, a thing. Like, people are living in planes. I watch a lot of these shows. People are living in planes. People are living in shipping containers. I would love to live in a New York City uh, subway car just in a field somewhere. That'd be fun. <laughs> be I, got, fun. I, I got some buddies building a, a school bus. There you go. Yeah, that, that was, that's the hot thing. You get that schoolie. They're going to live in the school bus. Hell it cost yeah. them near no, almost nothing. <laughs> yeah. We should do it. You and me. That's all. This is it. Let's let's turn this chat into a into a uh, we create a, a school bus and live in it together. Call it destiny. <laughs> all right, where are we at? Um, uh, let's ask this. I really like this one. Uh, I don't know how how much work you guys um felt that this deserved, but I really like the idea that uh, that we roast a president. I think I think a, a good portion of the internet right now is making fun of our current president. I, and I think that's a waste of time. I think we all know where we're at. We all know what position we've taken. And it's silly now. Like, you know, it's either fa Facebook friends reinforcing your position or not. So I figured we would roast somebody else. It's the it's Independence Day. Let's roast the forefathers. If you guys will uh, uh, will oblige me. I gave you guys some uh, some basic facts. Um, actually, I'll, I'll actually just I'll read off some of the facts real quick just for just for the audience. George Washington, first president, elected unanimously. Teeth were made of ivory. He was a mule farmer, uh, and he was like a, he was such a douchebag. He used to borrow money and never pay it back. And then there's this weird rumor that he might have been the father of Alexander Hamilton. Uh, John Adams, second president, died fourth of July. Thomas Jefferson, third president, died fourth of July. 
Um, John Adams wanted to, wanted presidents, all presidents, to be called Your Highness instead of Mr. President. And uh, Thomas Jefferson used to freak people out by eating tomatoes because uh, he was a, he was this like worldly French guy who like brought all these crazy foods back. So he was like eating ice cream and tomatoes, and everybody was freaking out. Uh, so there's some quick facts. So just on those, here's my first roast to president. Uh, it's about George Washington, and it's the fact George Washington. We always thought that George Washington's dentures were made of wood. That's the thing I learned in school. Turns out his dentures are actually made of half walrus tusk and half slave true uh, teeth. Half walrus tusk, half slave teeth, uh, which is a brutal truth. And it's also the reason I don't feel comfortable singing ebony and ivory in public. <laughs> if I didn't have a stuttering problem, that would that would have crushed. <laughs> All right, uh, Rosa President, Rosa Forefather, anybody at will. Do you think George Washington didn't pay the money back because his teeth were from slaves? <laughs> I mean, since we're on the topic of George Washington, like, I don't know. So, like, like you said, he's got ivory. That I, was also, I also read some stuff. He had gold and lead teeth. And you got to think, like, he had to willingly go get that intervention at a time where physicians used to smoke cigarettes while they did surgery to like expel your demons, you know? Right. <laughs> so like that was immediately a terrible call and they implanted the first grill. He, he technically had the first grill and the man never smiled on our, on our currency. So yeah. in my opinion, I feel like Paul Wall is a better patriot than George Washington. You know what I mean? Yeah. That shit all day. I didn't realize that uh, George Washington is the, uh, is the master P of, uh, of presidents. <laughs> No, he was. He's a lot of firsts. He was the first farmer to uh, to create the mule, which I don't know if you guys know. It's a, uh, if you if you breed a horse with a donkey, then you get a mule, uh, which also means that he's not only the first president, he's also the founder of the donkey show. So that's what I love about George Washington. It's one of my favorites. Um, anybody else? Uh, yeah, I think um, I found something that was just tr was weird. I uh, I feel like. John Adams trying to I feel like these guys really just wanted to leave like England and just make America like their man cave you know sure. what I mean in Britain they had to be so buttoned up and so formal and then they decided they could leave and like escape the judgment you know what I mean like George Washington his teeth are disgusting he doesn't care he just wants to get away from all this judgment he wanted to come to a, a new place and just chill out and John Adams is like dude I want to just make this Britain I liked Britain so John Adams is like can we just call him your highness? Like your something, highness. like give me something, <laughs> dude. I miss home, <laughs> you know? They're just, yeah, they're addicted to it. I also saw John Adams' dog was named Satan. Don't, Satan. don't, have, a, don't have a joke for that. Just <laughs> throwing it out there. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my, my big John Adams fact was that uh, uh, he was actually the first person to live in the White House. So I'm confused because like the, the whole uh, idea is that if you go to the White House, you're supposed to stay in the Lincoln bedroom and have sex in the Lincoln bedroom. But if John Adams is the first one in the White House, you know he had sex in all of those rooms, right? So in essence, I would say every room in that house at one time was considered the John Adams bedroom. That guy came all over the thing. Chap Thomas Jefferson, fun fact, he doubled the size of the country and he tripled the size of his own slave population. <laughs> That's funny. James Madison was after him, and I said James Madison was five foot four. And I don't know if you guys know, you know, he uh, was the one who proposed the whole three fifths compromise, where he said black people were only uh, three fifths of a person. And I think they, I think they got it fucked up. I think he was trying to say when he saw a black man naked, it had to be at least three to five dicks on that man. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. He was just trying to make everybody equal his his stature in person. He's like, well, look, I'm not quite six foot, so I, I'm, I'm about three-fifths a person. So now everybody's three-fifths a person or I'm in trouble. That's James Madison. James Madison was just cre he was creepy. He had uh, uh, two vice presidents that in his office died in office while he was president. Uh, so a lot of people remember him as the fourth president. But I like to think of him as the first Michael Peterson. <laughs> the guy who threw all his wives down the stairs all right uh let's move on uh <laughs> fourth of july i love fireworks you love fireworks you're american we all do it um if you could invent a firework shape sound or color scheme what would it be and why chicago nights what's the chicago nights <laughs> nothing gets cracking like chicago nights a lot of popping doesn't stop <laughs> one long ass firework 
with at least 80 rounds. Just yeah, okay. Not- <laughs> just every one firework is the finale. Yeah, that's that's the finale one. <laughs> I would um I would turn it into a, a business plan and I would I would start advertising through fireworks. You know sure. what I mean? So I'll you know just you know my Instagram in fireworks. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just spelled out and uh, yeah, just pop them throughout the city. Obviously every night just to get, you know, some more followers. Yeah. Uh, apparently, uh, I don't know if this is happening everywhere else, but the New York people it's happening and it's real for some reason. Um, since June 1st, there have been fireworks every single night. Is that happening in LA? Is that happening in Miami? All over LA. Which yeah. we've, it's, it's gotten out of control. I heard fireworks tonight. Yeah. It's getting They're out of control. Happening. The um, I would say if I could design a firework, I would call those guys from Co- Coachella that did the holograms, and I would uh, and I would get my own personal Tupac firework. That's what I would do. I would want to. I would want to have one with like a massive like. It just starts out looking so cool, and right when it pops, everything disappears, and it just sounds like a really like sad trombone. You know what I mean? Just like. Speaking of which. <laughs> I thought Rusty Trombone would be a good name for a firework. Yeah, which one's Rusty Trombone? That's where you... Dude, I, I think, I don't know. It, you're definitely jacking somebody else off. I don't know what the other thing that's happening in it. Yeah. Where's the rust come from? That's, a, that's the guy that invented it. That's his name, Rusty. Mm. <laughs> Rusty, Rusty Trombone. And I was like, the golden shower would also be a good one. I feel like every sex position that you learned in like the sixth grade that isn't yeah. really a position, great firework. <laughs> I like it. I like I'm, it. I'm confused by the word firework. I feel like that's like uh, the industry that fi- that's like what firemen put on on LinkedIn. <laughs> I'm firework. I'm in firework. That's where I am. <laughs> <in. laughs> I do firework. It's funny because people that are fireworks are, are the opposite. They're pyrotechnicians. So, yeah, that's yeah, I don't and, know why we're not doing yeah. it. Why don't we call it pyrotechnics? That's that would be a cool name. All right. I like that better. Pyro- but Americans would be like nerd. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but there's no there's no way to tell a girl at a bar that you shoot off fireworks for a living and have it sound good. That's you, crazy. Because you either because you either literally have to go, no, I shoot fireworks, and then she's like, yeah, no, 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 I know. I asked you what your profession was, or, <laughs> or you go, I'm a pyrotechnician, and she's like, boring. <laughs> yeah, in 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 America, it's not cool to be smart. <laughs> no, not number yet. One, number one in it. <laughs> and, con- and, and, and for some reason, continuing to not be uh, still. Um, but we, we're, the, we're the greatest at, at being the greatest. I know that. That's a fact. Uh, let's do a Mary Bank Kill that doesn't make any sense. Let's do a Mary Bank Kill about fireworks, boats, and barbecues. The, uh, the trifecta of 4th of July. <laughs> if you had a Mary wow. Bank Kill, these inanimate objects. Uh, uh-huh. Fireworks, boats, and barbecues. I mean, Gary, you want to go? You look like you got something. I mean, I, I think it's a it's an easy marry uh, to the barbecues. Yeah, I can't can't give up the food. Uh, I'm definitely gonna marry the food. I want that to be there for life. Uh, you know, I'm definitely gonna. I'm banging boats. Who doesn't want to bang boats? Right? I see <laughs> boats are sexy as fuck. Right. I bang boats every day. <laughs> and and fireworks. I think I think we've all had enough. I think we were just talking about. It. <laughs> it's time. It's time. They're cool. They're cool for like the first five seconds. And after that, it's too much. It's time. Yeah. John. Yeah. I mean, I would, uh, I would also kill the fireworks because I'm just sick of waking up at like 3 a.m. with them going off all the time. I'm going to marry the barbecues because of the food, like Gary said. Uh, I'm going to fuck the boats. And that's mainly because I only like doing boats every once in a while. And usually when people go on boats, I'm the last person invited. So it's really just my life. You know what yeah. I mean? I like I like this weird um like like orgy analogy you've you've decided. Yes, yes, boats and orgies. Boats and They're like, look, we need a seventeenth person at this orgy. Who are we gonna call? <laughs> I guess it's gotta be John. He's the one who always looks stressed, right? I can't be the first one there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fun. It's fun to be the seventh one uh, invited to the boat or the orgy. All you really gotta do is just show up and bring some beers, and you're a hero. That's it. And then you get an applause break. <laughs> You're always the freshest, so you don't look the weakest, you know? <laughs> right. You haven't, started, you haven't started sweating yet? Yeah. <laughs> um, Marcelo, Bear, uh, Mary Ben Kill. Um, I'm also going to kill fireworks. I think yeah. um, it's, uh, fireworks is like, it's, it's just annoying to me. It's annoying. And like, what have we gained from fireworks? 
Jason Pierre-Paul lost a finger. I mean, we haven't learned our lesson, America. Yeah. Like people are losing a limb, and and, two, and by the you way, know there was two there was two NFL players that lost fingers that same Fourth of July, and the one with the bigger contract was the only one we heard about in the news. Dude, Jason Pierre-Paul, <laughs> that's crazy though. Jason Pierre-Paul, he's great. Now he just he has one less finger because of fireworks. We're still popping them off. Yeah, it's never helped us. Also, would the forefathers be proud of us? Like I hope, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years from now, you know, they just we celebrate in the exact them. same way, right? Just that nostalgia. They just make some noise. <laughs> All right, so what are you doing with boats and barbecues? Um, oh, see, this one is going to be controversial. I'm, I'm, I'm marrying the, bar, the, the boat. Yeah. Because if you marry a boat, that means it's got to be a big boat in this hypothetical. You better give me a big boat in this hypothetical that I can sleep, <laughs> that I can sleep in. Because if I'm going to marry like a little, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, Yola, I don't know how to the say canoe? it. canoe? Yeah, if you're going to give me a canoe, then I'm not marrying that the canoe. kayak? You know? I'm going to be picky. But... Um, barbecues. I'm done with barbecues. I'm done with all the people and the plates spilling and the ketchup and the mayonnaise everywhere. You you came with a clean shirt. You left with mayonnaise on your. Shirt. It's just I'm done. I'm done What's with the, the barbecues. Well, you're but you're Cuban. Yeah. What's the Cuban Miami barbecue equivalent? Oh man, it's just. What do you mean? Like you don't call it a barbecue. What's your What's your big cook? Yeah, yeah, we do. We call it a barbecue. A barbecue, you know, it's a barbecue. <laughs> Some barbecue. <laughs> but, all right, here's mine. All right, here's mine. I'm going to change. Actually, I'm going to change my answers uh, from what they were previous, based on what you, what you guys said. I'm going to. Um, I still got to marry barbecue. This is such a brown panel. We got to marry the barbecue. It's like because we understand the complexity of barbecue and that and that it's. There's no monogamy to the barbecue because something different can always come from it. That, and, and, and it's really the only thing that'll ever make you happy, you know? Uh, and it's a longevity thing, you know? So you got to marry the barbecue. I have, a, um, I have a barbecue on my boat. I used to bang the boat, but now I'm going to bang the fireworks just from the, just from like, we're, we live in a world now where you can uh, like get a, a following by doing something dumb. And I've seen plenty of people put fireworks in their ass and shoot them off and get a million followers. So I'm going to bang a firework and film it. And then, uh, and I guess that leaves me killing the boat, um, which is fine. Every, you know, you guys brought up a good point. It's like owning the boat's not really where it's at. You got to, you got to be invited to somebody else's boat. And then I don't have any other, I don't have any responsibilities. I don't have to like, I don't have to like jog it. I don't have to like, you know, I don't have to choke it. I don't have to do any of the boat things that you'd have to do. Uh, <laughs> would, yeah. <laughs> what is it? So you get to choke the boat. <laughs> <laughs> He's just saying any words. He doesn't know what, what people do to boats. You got to, you know, you got to pull it. I'm saying engine words that are reciprocal with sex. I'm, this is gotta, I'm a genius. Um, all right. So let's see. Twist it, bop it, you know. <laughs> twist it, bop it, lock it, pull it. Do you guys have any questions for Dan? <laughs> questions for Dan. Hit me up. Hit me. And I got a question. What is your favorite animal and why? Oh, um, <laughs> I would say, well, my favorite animal is my animal. Is, uh, I, got, I got a little service dog named Tess. She's half Dalmatian, half Pitbull. Uh, she's fantastic. She's, uh, she's one of my favorite things to, to have uh, on earth. Um, but, but in the, you know what I just learned is there's this thing called, um, oh, what is it called now? It's a uh, it's a type of guinea pig that looks like a like a miniature hippo, and I'm obsessed with this thing. I gotta find out. I gotta find out what it's called. Hold on. It's like a um, guinea pig hippo. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on. Guinea pig hippo. I'm gonna tell you right now what this thing is called. I'm gonna be so upset if its name is literally guinea pig hippo. That's, like <laughs> <laughs> That's my old uh, AOL screen name. Actually, it sounds <laughs> it, it sounds like a sounds like a little girl's answer to your favorite animal. She's like, I can't decide. Uh, guinea pig hippo. <laughs> No, it's what it's what they called all of my Italian immigrant ancestors when we got to the country. Uh, no, it's called a skinny pig. Google it right now. It's called a skinny pig. It's a hairless. Share, share your screen. Let's see it. It's a, oh, can I do that? Yeah, it's a oh yeah, I can do that. It's a hairless black uh, hippo. Let's see it. Hold on. It looks like my big toe. It's look at it's, that. Oh, nice one, bro. It's Did you notice? Hairless, it's a hairless black guinea pig. That's a super specific animal. Isn't that cute, though? Did you notice that not one of them looks happy? No. Why would they? They don't, they don't have the ability to smile. You don't need it to. You don't need it to be happy. It makes me happy. Look at it. Dude, it's Look that, at that animal. Don't you is, just wanna? Don't you just wanna cram that in your ass? Do you know what I'm saying? That, <laughs> that animal is one? so is so slow, Dan. <laughs> that animal. That slow. animal. That animal. You know what that animal is? 
that animal is the jungle equivalent of a hot dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> like for, for a monkey, for a tiger, they're walking by, they're like, nah, maybe I'll just grab a hot dog. And they're, so, they're so easy. They're just like, that animal's not going to protect itself in the wild. Damn, that animal's doomed. If that's, if that's not sitting in some, in some white girl's bedroom in a pink cage, it's, it's jungle meat, bro. <laughs> jungle meat. That's my, that's, that's my porn nickname, actually. Uh, questions for Dan. I have a question for you, Dan. Yeah. Do you, I speak Spanish. I, I'm very good at it. Yo soy muy bueno hablando en español. And um, I, uh, I want to know, do you know any Spanish? And if you do, when have you like used it? <laughs> oh, I love I love Spanish. Uh, I, I took it in high school. I thought I was going to be the man. Right. And then um, like it was for me. It was like I, they told me that Spanish was the closest one to Italian. So I was like, yeah. And so I was doing Spanish like I was like connecting with my my ancestors. So in my head, <laughs> just Spanish what is 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 another language that can apply to any other country. So every time I go abroad, no matter where I am, I just start speaking I'll be in South Africa and I'll start speaking Spanish as if that's somehow that's gonna solve it. Because I'm worldly. I know what I'm doing. It's the most uh, foreign it, you get is a little apparently, bit apparently that doesn't work. You actually need to know the language of like Switzerland if you go there. Hey what's up guys? Uh, <laughs> what Lance is this? here um Marcelo's uh, half brother. Um, <laughs> I, um, Marcelo, um, you have to. Um, Mom said you have to get out of this and come do the dishes. <laughs> he looks so much like Marcelo. Yeah. This is incredible. You're, yeah. You look like if Marcelo could actually grow a beard. That's yeah. Incredible. He, um, I'm, I'm Marcelo's uh, older half brother. <laughs> um, Mom said you have to come do the dishes and stop doing these comedy shows. <laughs> Jerry, John, and Dan, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but. But um, I've been doing the dishes every, literally every night during quarantine. And mom said it's time that this stops. So, Marcel, you have to come. You have to come do the dishes. Lance, how long have you lived at home? <laughs> <laughs> well, the quarantine, you know, that's a personal question. The quarantine has been, uh, you know, <laughs> it's been hard on everyone. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the chat, everyone. Lance Weiss, professional New York City comedian who has started a business called MeetingBombs.com, where he will bomb your Zoom discussions uh whether it be a uh a, a, like a work call or your grandmother's birthday with the social distancing it's what we got and he will bomb in and there will be a lot of confusion at your party for a while and they will try to care in him and he'll stay strong and stay in the bit so check out meetingbombs.com you can hire the man the myth to uh to do what he's to do what he does um questions oh, for dan God. uh who did gary have you asked me a question no, I, yeah i got a question for you dan i yeah. uh, was on Pornhub recently, you know, like most of us. And uh, they said premium is free now. And I was right. just wondering, who's, who's been paying for porn in the first place? This is a good. This is a good time for me to mention that I uh, run a podcast called Porn Stars Are People, and uh, and and the uh, the main pitch at the end of the thing is that everybody should pay for their porn. If you if you don't pay for your porn, then uh, the the your favorite artist might not be making any money off of the thing. It's also a good time to tell everybody in this in this discussion that they should tip us. Uh, if you guys are having fun in the show, please give us a tip. Uh, we don't do this for we do do this for free, and that's the problem. Uh, no, I, you know what? I think I I think there's a there's a vast uh, misunderstanding of of how the porn industry works and should work. So it is hard. I, I am, uh, I'm a victim. I don't, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a victim. I'm a, I'm a, what's the opposite of a victim. I'm a, I'm an abuser. <laughs> yeah. uh, I abuse the free porn. Uh, that was, I mean, that's how, that's how a lot of us learned how to look at porn was lining up eight second clips back to back to back to back to back to try to make a minute and a half so that we could, we could get our, uh, our, our luckies or whatever you call it. Still trying to keep it PJ. Hey, what's up? This is Lance, John's half brother. John, <laughs> um, you've got to come. Uh, you got. <laughs> I can't wait until he comes on as Gary's half brother. We can cancel him. I'm waiting. For <laughs> so does that mean me and Marcello are related? If we're both <laughs> no, it was an. Did you see it? It was an outfit change. Come on now. Come it's on. a different character, John. It was a makeup change. Come on now. It's not the same guy from before. <laughs> Where'd my half brother? I like how he took the picture from my background. <laughs> right. He stated his background. He's, he's showing you the, all of the work and effort he put into it. That's yeah. he, also, he also has your head in there a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit of like bald receding hairline. Yeah you, got, yeah, you guys have the exact same hairline. I love it. 
I like uh, what's, what's fun about that character is that uh, all it took to be to go from Marcelo to John was to change the hair. Same glasses. <laughs> same glasses. Same glasses. Same, same beard. I mean, that's, that's the only difference between me and John. <laughs> <laughs> Thirteen years and and the hair and the hairline just reverses. So you just take Marcelo's hair and put it on the bottom. <laughs> Take you know, Marcelo's inability John. to grow a hair like, to grow hair on his John. chin and move it to J John's ability to grow hair on his forehead. Is this oh not God. your head? <laughs> that is legitimately the closest thing I've seen so far. Definitely more accurate than Lance's depiction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what else? What other questions did I have for you guys? All right. Um, John, you 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 have a history of befriending the wrong people. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, so I was I was buddies with this kid for a really long time, and uh, I it's there was this moment where I realized he was just such a dick. You know what I mean? Like we went to the mall. It was me, him, and his father. And his father, honestly, not the healthiest guy in the world. We were approached by an insurance salesman, right? And this insurance salesman told us he was like, "Listen, for six thousand dollars a year, you could take out a one million dollar policy on your father. Catch is he's got to die in twenty years, or else you lose it all." So the guy tries to hands us, hand us cards. I don't accept. My friend takes it, looks at me and is like, I felt bad, you know? So he takes the card. And a couple months later, uh, I noticed my buddy was just totally different at, at that point. Like I got into his car and he tells me to look at his Spotify playlist and just pick one so we can listen to some music. And as I was scrolling through, there was one called the Menendez Experience. And like, I don't know if anyone's aware, the Menendez brothers are two kids who killed their parents, right? And he had some weird songs. He had like Only the Good Die Young on it, like Don't Fear the Reaper, Murder on My Mind. Like he just had a ton of songs that were questionable. So we get to his house and I'm Googling something on his computer. And in the Google search find, I found some of the weirdest things. Like one of them was like, how do you make antifreeze popsicles? Right. <laughs> he did a price check on OJ's If I Did It, which I found out is $14. Great value buy, if you ask me. Um, and then, and then the third one, which was my favorite, was like, does carbon monoxide smell, right? <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what this kid's plan is. And uh, unfortunately, like a year later, not even joking, a year later, his father passed away. And that's when it all came into, into play. Like, I realized what had just happened. Because he goes up to do the eulogy in a brand new custom Gucci suit, pulls out these Cartier glasses, and his eulogy was three lines. And it started, he was like, you know, Dick was a great father, right? And I'm sitting there the whole time, like, oh, my God, his name is Tom. What are you talking about, dude? Like, <laughs> and then he checks his Rolex and leaves the, leaves the funeral, right? Gets into his brand-new S-Class Mercedes, blasting money on my mind, and just peels out. Dude, Dan, this is literally the worst Oedipus complex I've ever seen. Because, like, instead of killing his dad to have sex with his mom, he just killed his dad to have all the materials he needs to have sex with all of our mothers. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's when I realized he was an asshole. I like, I like the, the slow burn on that, how long it took you to realize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this years. Is, this what I think up, it's this funny. is Dan's brother. Dan, <laughs> um, you got to come mow the lawn. It's your time. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like this I like this one about passed away. I really like that we're still using passed away. I think we're using passed away wrong. I think we have a like an under, a misunderstanding of death in this country. And like, like we can't call everything passed away. If you murder your dad, that's not a passed away situation. Like everybody gets weird, but nobody just nobody says dead anymore. Nobody says killed. Nobody says murder. I saw uh, uh, the last time one of the plane crashed. Um, the the news article said 126 people passed away. And it was like, yo, they didn't pass away. They died in a fiery mess in their sleep. <laughs> they died in a violent destruction of body parts. That's not a pass away. Uh, pass away brushes it off, you know? No, oh, they passed yeah. away. <laughs> yeah, we don't understand it. Gary Curtis, true or false? Lil Nas X, your favorite performer. Ooh, uh, true. Okay. True. I don't, do. don't want to feel like I pressured you into it. You know what? <laughs> Honestly, the, the man is so entertaining. His his yeah. story, his, his Twitter, he's he's great, you know? I mean, when, when Lil Nas X came out and this young black man rose to the top of the country charts, white people were pissed. Yeah, then, well, yeah side note, just for anybody who doesn't know, like, uh, uh, if you haven't been paying attention, black people are taking over country music, Lil Nas <laughs> X being one of them. The Billy Ray Cyrus, Lil Nas X, Old Country Road, that's who we're talking about. Yeah. So then... 
he came out as gay and then black people were pissed. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this guy's doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> What does he have to do next? What's it, what's the next demo that he can uh, that, that he can have abandon him at this point? You know he's he's gay. I don't. Know. We gotta we gotta figure that out. He's gotta he's gotta piss off women, I guess. But he's gay. He's their best friend. I don't know. It's, gotta, it's almost hey, what's impossible. up? This is Lance, Gary's brother. <laughs> Gary, you gotta come up. You know you gotta. <laughs> I like I like the order of the impressions. Like clearly, the state like makes it uh, obvious that he, like how much he's giving up on. Uh, yeah. So the the first one, clear, totally a Marcelo brother, like hundred percent. Second one, really close to John. Third one, really drifting. Fourth one, I'm just gonna mail this one in. I'm holding a pillow. I love that's what I love about Lance. He's like I'll match the color of his shirt, not the skin. <laughs> commitment to the bit yeah oh in a way i would say that he that he appropriated your culture there gary i would say wearing a wearing a red shirt is a is a little red face there up on you there was there wasn't there was a juju hat in the back <laughs> the pillow is what just, did it for me look there. The pillow next to him that's right there gary there's your pillow i'll be honest uh as as much as lance is 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 bombing all these things he's probably he's like probably the the greatest fan of this show he's he's not missed one he um, i mean i mean he just made bombing his job and it's a normal thing. Yeah. He's crushing it. Smart man. Uh, all right. Real quick. Uh, we're getting, we're, we're, we're running to the end of time. Let's do this one. Let's do, um, I think, I think the basis for this for me was the whole idea of Paul Revere having this catchphrase that maybe he never said, right. The British are coming like, to, like there's, there's the historical debate about whether or not he even said that. Um, who has a dope catchphrase um, that, that is like, like underknown that you guys know about or who has a really well-known catchphrase and it sucks. I think I'm going to go with DJ Khaled here. DJ Khaled. Okay. Which, which particular catchphrase? Yeah, hit it. Hit us with it. I mean, the only one. To, <laughs> I know. I want to hear it. <laughs> DJ, DJ Khaled. First of all, I first started understanding DJ Khaled when that, when Snapchat happened, I think we all opened up to DJ Khaled when Snapchat, when he got a Snapchat, <laughs> this guy walking out of his, <laughs> out of his, uh, enormous palace onto a, a, a statue of a lion and just going lion. <laughs> it's, it just, it changed my life. <laughs> I think that, um, if anything is a major key in my life, I mean, it's, I, there used to be like essentials and then there's major key. I mean, like a major <laughs> key, like that's, Two of the biggest words we use. That's that yeah. was key. That was a key part of it. And major. I mean, come on, major key. Those were my favorite. Was was uh, was before they were as big. Uh, the ad libs is before they were as big as they were supposed to be. Like uh, I like hit, hearing all those little things. Hearing all the little Jada Kiss laughs and the and the <laughs> like uh, the Jay Z clear your throats and all that yeah. stuff. Those were always my favorite to sort of decode. And number one, that's viral everywhere is don't play yourself. <laughs> you, you played yourself. He has a toothbrush a right now where a dude is brushing his teeth and he just goes, another one. Another one. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> he's on a he's on a treadmill <laughs> with the camera on. Another All love, fan love. <laughs> <laughs> I thought best, Marcello, 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 seriously, mom is getting mad. <laughs> I thought if anything, Marcelo, you were gonna you were gonna do Mr. Worldwide. Oh man. Mr. John, Worldwide. favorite catchphrase, least favorite catchphrase. Uh, favorite catchphrase is simply Billy Mays here, and that's because I have never not wanted to purchase OxyClean after hearing that phrase. Billy yeah. Mays here, and you just get whatever, whatever the thing is, you're on board. It, it's just yeah, there's zero percent chance I won't purchase whatever it is. It yeah. could literally be like I don't know, like an Iron Maiden that I have to be put into. I'm buying it because Billy Mays is selling. Yeah, I would say so. Then I would say is he's not the set it and forget it guy, right? No, Billy Mays was the guy with the with a beard very similar to mine. Yeah, who exclusively sold OxyClean for like thirty years, and then he died of like some sort of respiratory cancer from spraying that all the time. No, he died because his heart was too big, just the way Billy <laughs> Mays. Died, right? His heart was legitimately too big. I I always thought that was the same guy from Home Improvement. <laughs> they, look the same. they look the same but two very different people i cannot tell the difference between those men al borland i like it 
Um, the, the, I, I like the set and forget it guy because his, his thing was not great. His product wasn't great, but he, he knew that if he got 115 people to be on the other side of the camera and yell back half of his catchphrase, we would, we would like be stuck with it forever. So he would just go set it and then point at them and the big, forget it. Is that the same guy? Is that the ShamWow guy you're talking about? I don't know. All of those guys, all those guys are very confusing to me. All of those guys, here's what I found out. All those guys end up getting discredited. Everybody who's an expert in their field, they get discredited because they'll end up dying of the thing that they were selling. Like the Atkins guy was doing the whole Atkins thing and he died of like a massive coronary. And not until he died were we like, hey man, you can't just eat bacon exclusively and live. <laughs> That's not how it works. I just, I can't wait till we do that with like the, um, the, the, uh, the dog whisperer, uh, Caesar Milan. Is it Milan? Right? Like, you, like for sure, he's going to get mauled to death by like a 150 pound Rottweiler. And once he's dead, we're going to be like, bro, you can't just poke a Rottweiler in his neck and make a sound. No. And have it go good. <laughs> I claim I claim Caesar Milan as a as one of the biggest Latinos in television. Okay, <laughs> I I am so proud of him. I'm so proud of that man. He's one of the one one of the people I look up to in Hollywood. I rehabilitate <laughs> dogs and train people. <laughs> Yo, I love I love that guy's the the gall to walk into a house and be like, I will teach you to not be so submissive. <laughs> like he, he, if you watched any of those shows, it's literally him roasting whatever people he's helping. And it's usually like happy white people that watch. Eat. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how well, I feel as a good dog owner. That's how I feel when I meet other people's dogs is I'm like, you're like, they're, they're like, well, I can't, can't, he's just so crazy. It's like, you're the worst. <laughs> like that, that's the thing. Like when people's dogs, like if you go to somebody's house and you leave the door open too long and they're like, Hey, don't open the door. My dog will bolt. <laughs> it's like, bro, your dog hates you. He's trying to leave. Come to my house, you open the door, you leave the door open, my dog won't go outside. She'll just look at me and be like, are you trying to air condition the whole neighborhood? Your dog, <laughs> dog hates you. The dog is a flight risk. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. If, your dog, if your dog is, is like the worst foster child in the, in the program, <laughs> then you know that you're not giving it the type of life that it's supposed to lead. Uh, Imagine if that was like that with kids. You walk in and the, the parents are like, yo, don't close the door. Don't Billy, the Billy, door Billy, Billy, Billy will literally leave. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, uh, favorite or uh, favorite or least favorite catchphrase? Uh, I'll say uh, my favorite, I'm going to go with, I want, I want you to say it though, Marcelo. Uh, Scarface, Tony Montana. Say, say hey, hello. It. There we go. I knew you were going to say it way better than I could. <laughs> No, but hey, listen, Gary, I need you to do it first. I need you to do it as, as Cuban as you can do it. Say hello to my little friend. Look at that. Man, that's good, dude. That's good. That's good. I Yo, <laughs> what's his name? Um, Tony uh, the, Al Pacino. Yeah, no, but the, there's, it's going to be um, the guy that did the boxing movie. Jamie Fox? Uh, not Michael Jordan, but the Michael, other, oh, Michael B. Jordan. Michael yeah, B. Jordan. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's uh he's the new Scarface apparently. Is that true? What? Yeah, but dude. This is what this is what's so dope about like uh, Michael B. Jordan's career is like he's he's going down this lane of right now where everybody's getting canceled and he's just he's just sitting back and he's going yo which things that were supposedly had to be these characteristics of actor that we can now call into question and I could take him over. And like that, cause that's how close that Creed movie was, was that was like, it was almost going to be Rocky. And they were like, you know, why don't you just be Creed? Like, let's just have you be Creed. It doesn't make sense that you're like an Italian dude. Uh, <laughs> let's make you Creed so that and, we don't piss everybody off. And then, and then, and then like, you know, a couple years later, they're like, no, we can make you an Italian dude. It's fine. It's fine. You're Italian. He's totally your dad. We can uh, do it. You can, you can be, you can do it. This is the last samurai. I mean, you know. Yeah. Hey, but, if, if this turns Michael B. Jordan Cuban, because first I made a video that I didn't like it because I don't think Michael B. Jordan has ever even had like a Cuban grandma. You know what I mean? Like, he, he, you know, he, I don't know. But now I'm like, if this makes Michael B. Jordan a Cuban and he's so big, this could be huge for us. It's going to be huge for Cuba. I'm kind of excited. I'm kind of excited now. I like it. I like it. Uh, but like, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of a, it's an upsetting role because uh, they've, they've never put a Cuban in that role. 
Yeah, that's great. You had one of my crew. You had you had Al Pacino, and then then now you got Michael B. Jordan. So yeah, we're trying but, to de de culturally appropriate, but meanwhile we're still we're still not giving any jobs to Cuban actors. So they can't they they can't commit fully. No, yeah, we're not solving the problem really. Uh, I would say here's my favorite catchphrase, and I haven't figured out how to perfectly apply this, but I just realized the other day Forrest Gump's a genius because he used to do this thing where um because he knew he was gonna fuck it up, like he knew that it wasn't gonna go good. And so, like, he made it so that you couldn't blame him for anything because he would start every sentence and be like, I'm not a smart man, okay? I don't, I'm not smart, uh, but look, I do know what love is, okay? I'm not a smart man, but I do know what AIDS is. Like, I'm not a smart man. Uh, and it's just, it's a good, it's a good way to back out because you're not, you're not putting anything on your own shoulders with that. And then you're pressuring everybody else. You go, look, I'm not smart, but you can't. You can't just you can't just break up with me and take half of my millions. That's not what you're gonna do. It's a good catchphrase. It is it, never used to the to the full extent, I think. All right, let's do the I thing. Like we, go ahead. I was gonna say I feel like we should start just using that in our everyday life. Just start yeah. every sentence off before anything. Listen, I'm not a smart man. <laughs> <laughs> I think men can just do that when they're when they're dating women. You look, I'm not a smart man. Okay, I don't know where I fucking put the ketchup. I don't know. I'm not a smart man. I didn't shit on the toilet seat on purpose. I'm just not a smart man. Uh, so I, humble. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. I said, you're just so humble and honest. <laughs> right, right. Baby, I'm not a smart man, but I do know that I accidentally had sex with your sister. All right. Uh, it's 11-11 on the East Coast. Uh, show's coming to an end. Make a wish if you're on the East Coast. Um, let's go around the circle. Let's plug all your stuff. Uh, the, let's, let's, let's do the massive trifecta the, the, uh, for anybody watching the show. The trifecta is uh, like, share, subscribe if you like the comedians involved in the program. Uh, they, in the email that you got that got you the link to the show is all the links to all the comedians, whether it be their Instagram, their Twitter, or their, or their direct page. Like, share, subscribe. Get the stuff out there. Uh, help us share our content. If you wanted to tip us, you can tip us. Do that. Uh, one quick final thing, and then I'll have all the comedians plug their stuff. You can review the show on the website where you got the tickets. It doesn't take a lot of time, but it means a lot to us to get a good review. If you had a good time on the show, please give us a good review. We would love it. It makes us feel really good. If you had a bad time on the show, you know what? Just keep your fucking mouth shut. Nobody likes to snitch, all right? Uh, let's go around the circle. Tell us your Twitter, your Instagram, and how to follow you. What's up, y'all? I'm at Gary Curtis Funny on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, that's it. Check me out on there. That's all you need. Marcelo. Hey, hey, Andrew. Uh, hey, Brandy. Hey, Kim. <laughs> hey, Rich. Hey, Samsung SM T377A. Hey, Santana Jackson. You can follow me on Instagram at Marcelo HDZ. I love you. Can you see Marcelo, the let's go. <laughs> Come on. Uh, John. How great would it be? If Apo Marcelo and apologies real quick to John. I forgot to throw the H in his name, and that, and that showed up uh, on the screen. There's That's an H fine. In. That's Give fine. No, no, no. I actually changed it to J-O-N. I'm not J-O-H-N. I'm J-O-N. I thought so, but then it was in the yeah. – all right. Go ahead. Anyway, uh, you guys can follow me at John Elias Comedy on Instagram and TikTok, and fireworks are going off right now. Uh, definitely more content content to come. We got an improv group coming up soon, and you'll find out some of that information on my Instagram. Check out John J O N or J O H N Elias, uh, the Berenstein Bears of comedy. Uh, <laughs> thank you to all my comedians for being here. Appreciate you guys being a part of this. Uh, thank you uh, to everybody who watched the show. We have uh, four shows every Friday. Uh, today's Thursday, but we're trying to avoid the holiday. We have five o'clock and eight o'clock. 10 o'clock at midnight in the Eastern Standard Time so that we can hit all of your markets and so on and so forth. If you enjoyed the show, send me an email. We'll get you tickets to another show. Five o'clock shows every Friday, always Facebook Live. You don't need anything to show up on Facebook. Thank you guys for being here. My name is Dan Fergalat. I got a podcast called Porn Stars where people drops every Monday. We talk to porn stars, try to destigmatize the industry and uh, come up with some sex positive ideas. Uh, thank you guys for all listening and watching. Take care. Thanks, Dan. <laughs>